Today, Keisha Sharp is here. She plays Monica on the hit series Girlfriends on CW. Very happy to have you here today, Thank you. Monica. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with that. <laughs> so first, I just want to say congratulations. Thank I know you. you guys just hit your 150th episode. Amazing. Yeah. Thank and you. I was there that night, and I was very happy. I got to watch you guys, uh, thanks to Mary Lou, who will yes. be joining us later. Yes. Um, I got to see while you were taping that episode. And I just, I like the chemistry you guys had. It just seemed like you guys were having fun with it. I think over, because it's the seventh season, uh -huh. if we didn't have chemistry, we'd be in trouble. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? yeah, especially on a sitcom. Especially right. on a sitcom. So I think what's happened, and, and it didn't happen right away. It, it, it's like a family that, or a group of friends that get together for the first time, and then you grow and you grow and, and you become a family. So, yeah. And that cake was pretty good too, wasn't it? It was wonderful. <laughs> Every time you guys would take a break, I was running back to the green room. Getting and the I, cake? Yeah, I found the cake. You know? That's where it went. <laughs> I thought I had to go visit more of these shows. You know? Yeah, we had some good desserts backstage. But, you know, I was, so I, I was enjoying, you know, because I knew I was going to be doing the interview, yes. so I was kind of observing everybody, you know, mm -hmm. you know, more than maybe the rest of the audience as far as just the different personality types yes. and stuff. And the thing that struck me about you, though, I just, I loved your voice. You oh, stood out to me so much because of your voice. Thank you. Thank you very much. Like my speaking voice. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> Well, thank you. So I, don't know. I hear that all the time. I don't know what it is. It's like it's different, and people say they like it, so it, it's good. It's, it's a little Earth the Kid in there, but um, anyway. <laughs> but you sing as well, actually. Yes, I do. And yes, I so do. I don't know. Maybe you went to what the Boston Conservatory? the Boston Conservatory. Yes, and I well, I thought I was going to be a singer. I thought that's what I was going to do, and then um, I decided to go into theater, which I loved because I loved the the idea of singing and emoting a feeling through that and then creating the story through music. And I just knew I was going to do that the rest of my life. And I still love it. I still want to eventually go back to it. Uh -huh. um, and then I decided a few years ago, before I came to LA, that um, let's try television and film. Mm -hmm. and, and I love it. You know. Well, it's working out pretty well so far. I think so. I think I made a good decision. <laughs> so you just went um, full time on a regular character. That's on right, on Girlfriends. Girlfriends on season. series regular, yes. So this you were year. recurring. I was recurring for since the third season, um, so I guess about four years, recurring. Huh. Yeah, and they kept bringing her back. It was actually just supposed to be two episodes, and then it turned into what the it is now. Yeah, well, they liked you. So. I guess so. Yeah. And I guess so if you ever get a divorce, that's kind of a bad sign. <laughs> or if they're already, you know, written off or something. Right? <laughs> or no, or they, they, they get a divorce and she stays on because she's a nemesis to the guy that she's married. So it could work either way, yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. So, well, in fact, um, the one scene I remember reading in Mary Lou's book was about, well, well, your character is known for, how would you describe your character? Hmm. Well, the first, you know, other than this season, she was, the the B I T C H. <laughs> <laughs> she said it, not me. Okay, I was trying I to get her it. to say it. I didn't say it. I've <laughs> been very tactful, don't you think? <laughs> yes, I thought you were very good. You were like, you say it. Um, and people love to hate her, uh -huh. and that was fun to play that. You know, to be that character, and she's so far from who I am, and it was fun to, to you know, dive into that kind of person. But this season, they've made her. I hate to say nicer, but they, you nicer. just you get to get inside her. Why? Because there's some reason she's that way. Why uh -huh. is she that way? Why is she so hard? Or why is she so quick to judge? And so you're, now you're getting to look inside her and, and, and love those vulnerable parts of her that they're showing. And it's really nice to see that. So is it get fun to, to uh, use some of the zingers, though? That it is. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're lovely. Uh, you know when you get the script and you're like, oh my gosh, they're going to have her say that? It's like, oh! <laughs> You know, how's she gonna say that? Um, yeah, there, it's fun to step out of sight of yourself and 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 be able to say those things that you would never say as a person. But it's a character, and why is she saying it? And there's a reason for it. There's some hurt behind those those really rough, you know, words. You know, so. It's, yeah, and I, well, I like the fact, though, that it kind of well, it gave her character. I think makes her stand out because she has some, I'd say, swagger. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, do, you don't want somebody who's kind of wimpy or who's just there. No. You she's know, pretty I, strong. Yeah, she she's is. You know, she, she doesn't mince words. And, but so how do you draw on that? Since you said that you're different yourself. Well, that I was going to say that. Well, I am different, but I am a strong person. And I think I draw from that, that part of myself. I'm not just that, but, you know, with you this You can go character. there when you have to. Yeah, I can go there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I could do that. Uh, only my husband sees that. Uh, uh, <laughs> but I, I can draw... I'm going to interview him next Yeah, <laughs> He will like, yeah, she's like that. No, um, I do have parts of myself that are like Monica, and I am strong. Um, Does but he say, welcome home, Monica? No. 
<laughs> but he says, I've seen that. Oh, and there's, oh. <laughs> there's points where we'll watch the show, and he's like, oh, gosh, I've seen that look. I'm like, really? He's like, yeah. I'm like, oh, gosh, I guess there are parts of myself that are like Monica. And it's, it's a testament, I guess, to the casting directors, because sometimes I'm like, why do I get roles like this? Because I like to play zany characters, and that there's parts of myself that are like that. Um, but they saw that I am that strong, that strong part of myself, but not mean, but I am strong, and I think that's what I draw on for Monica. Now, you were also on Everybody Hates, Hates Chris. Chris. Yes. I played a completely different character. Her mm -hmm. name was Sheila, and she was an extra neighbor who was friends with Tashina Arnold's character, and her husband had a innocent crush on her so anytime Sheila would come around he would have to leave because he oh. felt uncomfortable around her oh. but she was a straight character you know not not mean and not overly nice just mm, that you know, so Monica's just kinda yeah there the, mm. the nice yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was fun I love the show so you know being on the show was great but there's nothing that I love better than playing Monica and being able to be that that swagger and the, the zany and say what she wants to say and it's fun and you left Everybody Hates Chris now, right? Yes, because, because I couldn't can't, do both, can't do both shows. Be, also because both shows are on the same night. Same that night. was the biggest issue. And it would just be too weird to have me be on one show and then there's a show in between. The, and they'll then, call it the Keisha Sharp night. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if that's a bad thing. <laughs> but then I've become an actor and not the character. I think, to me, it made sense because all of a sudden I'm that actor who plays two roles instead of people drawing into I am Monica. You know, on the street right. people think I'm Monica. And, and not, oh, that's that actor who plays those two roles in those two shows. Yeah, know? back to back. Yeah, be... just too much. So I understood. And you're doing a movie, too. Yes, uh, Bull Run. Mm -hmm. it's, um, we've shot it in June, and it's a drama, it's a deep drama, so it's not for the light of heart. Um, and it's a really great character-driven script and movie, so I think people will enjoy it. It's called Bull Run. Bull Run, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the other thing I thought was interesting in your background is, yeah. though, that, um, that you do martial arts. Yeah, boxing, and I love it. Um, I'm one of those people that I get bored really fast, and I think that's the Gemini in me. Hmm. But uh, <laughs> I do get bored quickly, so I needed something that I was going to be excited about if I'm, if I'm going to work out. And boxing and kickboxing is something I really, really enjoy and I really highly recommend, hmm. especially just to get any kind of aggression you have or just to, <laughs> <laughs> so you know? If Monica doesn't get that out of you, <laughs> then you right. go to the... Then you go to the boxing <laughs> and you, 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 you box up a ball or the person or, you, you know, whatever. But yeah, if the character... Does Monica get, do kickboxing? She does. Oh, okay. I'm not kidding. Oh. And I didn't... The second... I guess it was the second episode. Um, no, it's the first episode. When the character William is talking about Monica, one of the things that he says is she's a um, black belt in kickboxing or something. I thought it was, and they didn't know that I, I kickboxed, so it was really interesting that they oh. had that. But you in haven't it. done it so far on the show. No, well, the wedding ep there's an episode coming up where you see me box a little, but n not kickboxing, not yet. Mm. Well, just so you know, I'm going to be interviewing some people from the IFL. The, oh, really? The, yeah, the Martial the yeah, yeah, International yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fight League or whatever. Yeah. So uh, I can, wow. I can help you out. Could you? <laughs> Tell me when, I'll be here. <laughs> so when you were talking about uh, Monica, kind of, you know, that a character that, that is that, well, bitchy. Yes, yes. Is, is kind of re um, something in her background made her that way. Yes. How do you, wh what made her that way? Uh, well, now her parent, her mom, her mother. Mm. And we meet her this season, and it's just... Um, <laughs> you understand what, where that hard core came from of, of not feeling loved and, and therefore having a hard heart until someone gets past that and that's what William's character has done for Monica. It's, it's bringing in that fun, vulnerable side of her which she felt she's never been able to, to show because her mother is such a hard person and, and is very materialistic. Mm. and. Um, She's a daddy's girl, so the mother's jealous of that relationship that she has with her father, so she was extremely hard on, on Monica. And that's why she, you understand this season why she's that way, and it makes her more human. You know. Up next, more with Keisha Sharp, but first we're going to take a look at her on Girlfriends Being a... <laughs> B-I-T-C-H. <laughs> we'll be right back. Just so sick of it! I'm just, just so tired. 
of trying to make something happen. I'm so tired of hoping. Don't be tired of hoping, man. I wasn't. Even when the man I fell in love with rejected me, not once, but twice. I didn't listen to the voice that said, run away and go back to daddy's. I kept myself open. And when the time was right, William and I found our way to each other. And now I'm happier than I ever could imagine. Well, that's really good for you, but what am I supposed to do? I keep We are back with Keisha Sharp from Girlfriends, and joining me now is Mary Lou Belli, the director from Girlfriends on CW. She is the author of the sitcom Career Book. Pleasure to have oh. you back again today, Mary Lou. Thanks so much. So, well, thank you again, by the way, for inviting me. I was there that night when you guys were taping that episode that we just took a look at. It's fun to see it live, isn't it? Yeah, and you directed that episode. I did, I did. And, and she's wonderful. I actually, <laughs> the, those years ago, I directed Keisha's first two episodes when she was still a recurring character. Yes. Her very and first. I knew she had something. Oh, wow. thank yeah. you. Well, and also, it was also the chemistry of what she brought out in Reggie Hayes' character, in the William character. Yeah. And I went, these, these two have something special. It, there was something that just worked, and, yeah. and we had seen him. He had been engaged before, yeah. you know, in the first couple seasons, and you went, okay, this is going to work out. Yeah, we had chemistry as people, too. We just clicked oh, that all, that's right away, nice, yeah. isn't it? right away. Yeah. But I think what I liked most was the nemesis that she, you know, she came in and she was an immediate competition for the, for other the, for the girls. Yeah, it was you know, she took up William's time. She had you know, eyes on William for not just his position, but his power mm -hmm. and, and hopefully his love, which yeah. we find out is Later. true. <laughs> <laughs> true love, that's right. <laughs> um, but it was very, you know, they, they really, the girls, they just played off of each other very, very well. Yeah, I think it worked. I was going to ask you whether you met the, the characters or the actresses. Oh, <laughs> I'm not, I would say both. You know, um, Girlfriends is a very, very happy show to work on. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I hope this sounds right. When I come back to Girlfriends, because I direct many shows, I, I feel like I'm putting on my favorite pair of slippers. Oh, it is. <laughs> I love it is. That. It's comfortable. We we know each other well. It's familiar. Um, and there's a shorthand that yeah. when, when you yeah. when you you know how people have to talk. work. Yeah. You know, because ev all every actor has a different way of working. You and know, the, and the, although some of the vocabulary might stay the same, you know. So. Well, and when, and when you talk about some of the vocabulary of, of sitcoms and that sort of thing, I was at Michael Wallach's class the other night when you gave the intro, which I told you afterward I thought was a the UCLA, best yeah. short intro to comedy I've ever heard. But that's why I thought it'd be kind of fun to pair you two today, because you, in your book you have a guide for actors and writers, or really direct anybody who's interested in sitcoms, mm -hmm. and you kind of break down some of the elements of that. And so I thought maybe you could do that for us today. Um, well, you know, there's l little things like comedy always comes in threes. Always. And, and, and a, a good actor and a good comedian will know how to deliver um, something that comes in a, uh, in a uh, match of three. That's right. Usually we call it a run. Yeah. And the run, the third thing, is always the funniest. Funniest. You it know? should be. <laughs> if you know what you're doing. The way you do it, it always <laughs> is. Can you give me an example Thank from you. Girlfriends? Is there oh, something that comes gosh. to mind? Oh, I'll never think of that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can you, can you help? Well, from, where, from the clip that we just saw, mm -hmm. one of the things that the walkover that Monica does to Lynn. Perfect example. And she, she comes over and she does, it's three. She comes over, she tries to hug. She doesn't know how to hug. Then she pets the leg. Well, that doesn't seem right. And then the last thing she does is she puts the hand on the head and she <laughs> Which is the funniest of the three. So what happens is it's a lead up. It goes, it's like a um, crescendo. You know, it goes perfect. You know, joke, 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 mm. like that. You know. So now you told me beforehand you did not read Mary Lou's book, um, but because you knew I that. didn't know. <laughs> I'm like, hello. Keisha was actually doing another series at that time. Yeah. So <laughs> I missed out on all of it because I was doing, you know, the other show. Um, but now you I know. but you knew that. I mean, that was not. I mean, in other words, I think for the people at home, they, as a viewer, I wasn't aware of that. I mean, you have some senses. You, you know, you know, funny when you see it and all oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But you don't always know the structure or kind of what's going on. It's yeah. funny because, for me, uh, you know, I did theater and I started. That's where I started from. But with comedy, I, I. I knew it instinctly, like, and, and sometimes that doesn't happen, but I did an off-Broadway play called Eat the Run, and I was so scared of doing it because I was like, oh, it's a comedy, and I hadn't done it, I'm drama, that's all I've done. And, um, and, but I just knew what was funny, and I knew what it felt. It's what Mary Lou has done, is she's written it down for you, but you can feel it once, 
once you know it. And maybe some people can't, and they'll have to do it this way until they feel it. But there's a point once you just know what's funny. You just know how to, I don't know. And your best comic actors have that kind of timing and that trust, because everything that's in my book, you might be able to learn and go, I understand the mechanics of it. But until you get to the point where you feel it yeah, yeah. and know it, and know you know it, because there's a confidence and there's an ease. And there's, you know, if, if you see comedy coming, we say you're telegraphing it. Yeah. Right. And if you telegraph it, it, it's over. You won't get the laugh. No. But if, but if it's seamless and, it, and you don't know that it's coming, that's when you surprise the audience. And surprise is a key element in yeah. comedy. Well, one thing that I did not know until I heard you talk and read your book was that consonants are funny. <laughs> K's and P's are funny. <laughs> and actually, it's not just K's and P's, but it's anything that has a hard sound, like poop. Poop's a yeah. funny word. Yeah. It's got, you know? And Monica says it in that, which she's like, um, you're worse than a fo uh, you're worse than a something do I have to spray with fox pee pee. pee, -pee. The, the funny, because you could say, you know, I don't know. Urine another, is urine. not funny. No, but which one? Pee-pee yeah. is. And pee -pee you guys is. changed the word, I think, yes. right on the tape. I saw that. I was going to say the that, The first time yes. you said urine, and then you Because urine, even when I, when I read it, I was like, oh, good gosh. I mean, this is, you know, you, you can read it and say, okay, this is not, I hate to say it's not funny, but it's not the funniest it can be. You know, you're like, oh, gosh, what, they're, they're going to change it when we get in there. Well, also, you know, my, my book is really, um, the first five chapters are called Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And sitcoms work on a five-day schedule. And part of the five-day schedule is for not only the oh, actors, yeah. but the writers mm. to be able to hone. We have, we have two things, you know, we usually say we do to a joke. We either punch it, uh -huh. which means we stay in the same arena of that joke, but then we might um, just fine-tune it so mm -hmm. it's a better joke mm -hmm. to change something from urine to pee-pee, which is funnier. Because urine's pee, you know, it's funny because it's urine, but pee-pee is just funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, Fox pee pee. Mm -hmm. now, how, how much leeway do you have? For instance, you pick up the script, and even though I'm sure they're all great and wonderful, yeah, you know, you pick it up and you're good. saying to yourself, <laughs> you know, this is not the funniest line I've ever heard on the show. Do you say anything, or can you say anything, well, or is it not politically correct, and you just hope they catch it, or how a, does that work? Do you want to tell about our first run throughs on Girlfriends, what it's like? Well, I've, well you, as a director. As a director, okay. <laughs> well, we, we rehearse all day. And then the first day that we've done a full day of rehearsal, we sit down and do a, a producer's run through. Uh -huh. The producers are the writers. So they're listening to their words and they're also seeing them performed for the first time. They've heard them at a table, you know, where we've just read the words, but now they're actually seeing them performed. Uh -huh. And after every single scene at Girlfriends, we sit down and there is a give and take conversation between the director, the okay. writers, and the actors mm -hmm. where we can say, this is what I need, or what do you think about this? I'm having trouble with this. Mm -hmm. And it really, really is a wonderful collaboration yeah, between the artists who respect each other to make the show the best it can be. And the thing is with the writers too, because they are really, really good, you know they're going to catch it. Like Urine was that day, Urine, you were there and it was yeah. the past run throughs, you know. They caught it. They're going to always say, hmm, we can do something funnier if it's not as funny. They're really good at saying we can do something funnier. I don't, most, a lot of times I don't have to say anything because they're going to catch it if it's not as funny as it can be. Think well, and, and oh, I, I completely agree. And I think that, you know, it's, it's an instinctive thing, too, because the audience might be there. And you go, okay, they didn't laugh. We know it can be better. And it's also about pushing the envelope about how good can we make it. Yeah. yeah. And I would say, you know, I've directed a lot of shows, but I would say I feel like I do my best work on Girlfriends mm -hmm. because there's always, we always keep, I feel like we keep raising the bar. Yeah. And it's we never always, done. We yeah. could do it better. We could do it better. We could do it better. Yeah. And, and you know, that's a, that's a good feeling because you come out feeling, you know, the, your self-esteem is, wow, I thought I was going in to do the best show I could do. And I even did it's better than I thought. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, what I thought it could be. Now, is that hard as you, for, for you as an actress, though, if the lines change on the fly? Not or a, can you? No, because they always make, if it's something that's not working and they were trying to make it work, and then they, it's never something bad. So it's going to be better. So if it's better, it's going to roll off my mouth. Hmm. You know what I mean? It, like, and it's usually a tweak. It's not like a major. Yeah, it's usually just, I don't think there's ever been, maybe one time for not even me, that they changed it a, even a lot. Not a lot, but more than a line. But usually it's a word. Or cut that out. Or let's tweak that little ending right there. Let her walk out. You know, something, you know, as a director, yeah. she'll say, you know, instead of putting that, leave. And then all of a sudden, th there, that's it. That's what works. So no, it's not difficult at all as an actor. And also remember, they're writing toward the character. It's what they know the character's voices. 
You know, it's so they they they're putting into your mouth as an actor mm -hmm. what the character would say in this given situation. So um, I think usually we're all pretty much on the same page yeah. on that. It's then how can we fine tune it and you know to to make it the funniest it can be. That's right. Because funny is one of the essentials on um, in a sitcom. Uh, you yeah. hope. <laughs> <laughs> There's a problem. And another of the, the essentials is timing, right? I mean, timing is everything. I timing think, for, is everything. You know, I I just heard Keisha say the word crescendo. I find that musicians have an innate sense of comedy, and mm -hmm. so much of it comes from that that you know that musical sense first of all there's there's a, there's a, a melody to comedy yep. and then there's a rhythm to it as well and the people who can hear and feel both you know i i even um suggest in my book that for instance a gesture a yes, gesture yeah. that is legato or smooth again mm -hmm. we're using a musical term might not be nearly as funny as one that is sharp staccato and can you give me an example of, of what that might be um uh someone who if you know uh doing this might not be as funny as this. And that's simple. Yeah. And, and when it's in the right timing, because it's a lot of stuff just like the threes. It's the timing. It's, the, it's a lot of stuff to make funny. <laughs> um, and, and if you're not born that way, then you have to learn it. And you can learn it. That's the thing. You can. You learn what it is. And then all of a sudden, it becomes natural. So you know that this is not as funny as that. Oh, that. Yeah, <laughs> that feels well, right. Or it punctuates yeah. it. Just like, you know, uh, the right kind of punctuation at the end of a sentence will tell you what the tone is of that sentence. Mm -hmm. A sharp gesture will, you know, will let you know, laugh now. It's really subliminal um, hints that we give the audience, you have permission to laugh now because we're going to wait for you. Because if we keep going on while you laugh, you won't hear the next line. Right. But it's, it's a give and take. And I think also people who come from a theater background, mm -hmm. because yeah. we very often tape, um, well, oh, nearly right. all the time, um, it comes in front of a live audience. That's right. People who feed off of that that energy tend to do better on sitcoms because you get a better performance. And well, my Tommy says we are ready for a break. Oh, ready for a break. <laughs> we'll be right back with Mary Lou Belli <laughs> and Keisha Sharp right after this. We are back with Mary Lou Belli and Keisha Sharp from Girlfriends. Mary Lou's book is a sitcom career book. Well, speaking of timing, I know that one of the main things, of course, is I guess the phrase is holding for the joke? Holding for the laugh. laugh. Holding for the laugh, okay. <laughs> so you want to tell me what that is? You want to go? Well, um, we're in front of an audience, and you have a joke, you have a three, and you have a, a, a you hit the three. And there's a laugh, and there's a moment in which you don't wait until the applause or the laughter is gone. There's a moment in which the laughter hits a peak and it's falling, and then you continue. That's like technically what it is. But when you're doing it, you can feel when it's time to move on. But that's technically there's a there's a, um, a punch of the laugh. I don't know how to explain that more than to say there's a. It's a peak. A peak. That's great. It's perfect. It's a peak of the laugh, and then the laugh starts to fall, and you don't want it to fall and then pick up, because then you're dead. Like <laughs> the, ball <laughs> is, the ball is rolling, and then you got to go run and try to get it instead of keeping it going. So um, that's part of the art. You just have, you learn how to sense that and know yes. when it's time to. Yes. Yes. And a absolutely. And does everybody get it right? Um, you know what? The, at this the, level? the smart ones at this. Yeah, I think uh, if your learning curve's not pretty fast. You're, you're, you're going to fall. Because, and also, what Keisha mentioned about that ball rolling away. <laughs> when that ball rolls away, I'll tell you, that's the biggest life lesson you can have because you go, I had the audience and in they the are palm gone. of my hand and I just lost them. So you want to keep them going. You want to you you ride the lap. Yeah, right. Um, but, you know, there's something else that, and, and Keisha does it seamlessly and she doesn't, you know, she, she's too modest to even say, but the thing about holding for laughs, she, she explained the technical part of it, but really what a character does when they're holding for laughs, it's ab about the character finding a motivated way hmm. as the character mm, yeah. to wait. And sometimes that's not all that natural, but the character has to stay in character, think the character's thoughts. I um, mean, sometimes I can even get, I can cut back to uh, Keisha as Monica, and Monica will get me another laugh because she's thinking the next thought, and you know, the, the, the camera can just see through your Everything. eyes. It's like a mirror. So, so words, I can know that you, she gets a laugh, and then somebody else, um, uh, I know what she's thinking next, and I get another laugh on that. So, I mean, you know, you, you can't start laughing yourself. I mean, usually, right? Well, there's moments, there's moments in you, which you do, but you do it in character. Mm -hmm. you, you know, as Keisha, I can't come out and laugh, as, like laughing at what's just happened. But as Monica, if it's, it's, if it's 
if I can justify it, like if it's a justifiable laugh, if, I, if she's laughing at herself or at the moment, yeah, if it's real. In fact, I find uh, actors who are not as experienced think that character can't laugh, and Thank they certainly can. Thank you both can. very much for being here today. Keisha Thank Sharp you. from Girlfriends, Mary Lou Bella, uh, the director. Thanks, Greg. Mary Lou's book is the sitcom career book. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next time. So, but no, I did have fun, though, that night watching you guys. I could oh, just tell you guys were having a we did. No, you ain't miss it. I just never considered you worthy before. <laughs> You'd be okay. <laughs>